Good afternoon. It is Monday, July 30th, 2018, and I'm not done with the end of the Unifying series yet, but that's okay. We're going to take a break from heavy-duty stuff and go on a little road trip with the Shepherd. Yes, indeed. We have uh, tried to put together some clips from a month ago and can't seem to get it done either. Um, but today, spontaneously, we went out this morning because the shepherd has been learning how to tell a human what she wants. And so one of the things we taught her is if she wants to go outside, she has to go get her leash. If she wants a drink, she has to go get her bowl. If she wants food, she has to go get the food bowl, which are not called bowl because they sound too much like bone and ball. So she went and got her leash and brought it over and got it clipped on and then went and laid down by the door. And I think she thinks she's hiding, but she's spying on us. So let's get outside. After we went outside, we had to stop and kind of fiddle with our um, rope wrangler because after a few uses, it gets a little twisted, so we did that. And then we had a discussion with a friend about a particular spot ac um, across the bridge which separates my side of the lake from... Um, another eastern and northern part of the lake. So, forgetting that the friend said there was construction and the bridge was all torn up, off we went. So, what to do? Okay, so there's a dam there, and uh, apparently they're working uh, on the access bridge over the dam, not the, dam not the bridge that's parallel to my lake but it doesn't matter you'd have to see it to understand it so here we are and look at that doesn't that seem like that would be a great place to go wandering around with the dog but look at how high up it is what to do oh hey that looks like a much easier option yeah I like that option a lot it's steep but uh, I think that's, that's the option we're going to take. Let's go. Okay, remember all that rubblish looking stuff that we saw from up top? Well, here is a shot uh, looking down the lake that you'll see again at the end of this little clip. Uh, this is an urban rubble field. And what is that? That's a fancy term for um, a bunch of busted up concrete, um, cement pipes, you know, those sewer drain pipes, that kind of stuff. There's some, you know, somebody dumped some harden, some tar that had hardened there. And it's just basically, it's a break wall for the river. So in order to get downstream to where the trees are, we have to walk this uh, urban rubble break wall. And if I said this was part of the lake, it's not. This is actually a little stream or river that, is, that flows out from where the dam empties. And so to get from here to there, we have to go climbing. So after taking care of dog needs and trying to kind of scope up out the terrain, we're off. And so I took this picture of the um, bend downstream because I want you to remember uh, this view. You'll see it again at the end, and you'll be able to understand how far we went. All right, no time for chit-chat. Let's go. And there she goes, tromping off into the water. I decided to let her off lead. 
Now, the reason I did that is because we are relatively isolated right there. She would have to get very, very far away from me before she could get herself in trouble. The side of the river bank that we're on behind me is pretty much straight up. And and there's a lot of brush. I'm sure people's backyard fences are somewhere up top there, but it was a reasonably safe bet. She would not be able to wander off too far. So this was our second top stop, and this is actually where uh, we stopped for more than just a second, and she's making noise in my face. I have to say that, you know, crossing the debris field, I had to be mindful of my ankles, and um, I didn't want her pull, pulling me too much. So about halfway, no, I think we made it all the way through the debris field, but she kept going uh, so far ahead in the brush, forgetting that she had a lead on, that I got concerned that she would either get trapped and I wouldn't be able to get to her, or that she would pull me over uh, not realizing, you know, that I was at the end of, of the lead, and that's the reason I decided to take the lead off. And she did just fine. Uh, her recall, again, is not strong. We're working on it, and this was a good day to practice. So since this was a totally spontaneous activity, and the shepherd is off tromping around, I thought it might be a good idea to maybe explain why I have her. She is a five-year-old shepherd. I got her when she was about four and a half from a breeder. This breeder had two AKC registered lines and then a third line of mix so they had shepherds, they had AKC registered huskies, and then they crossed their AKC shepherds with their AKC huskies and created a subbreed called Shepskies uh, in the dog world. And they're cute, smart, high strung, you know, in terms of high drive and energy dogs. But this shepherd, so this shepherd had a bunch of dogs to deal with all the time. She's a, this is a female. And then the breeders also had designer cats. Uh, one breed only of designer cats. They also had horses, apparently. And they may have had more than one property, one of which was the t term farm was attached to that, but um, I don't know. So the dog grew up as a pack dog, if you know what a pack dog is. It's a dog that lives primary and primarily in a pack of dogs and learns their socialization from the pack of dogs. So if you look real close on her face, you will see, for example, um, some scars from some dog fights, no doubt protecting her puppies, and one of her eyes, her right eye, the lower lid is split. So she came to me and she was supposed to be my service dog candidate, and I had explained to the, one of the, it was a couple, and I had explained to them that I had some requirements. The first and foremost requirement is that the dog cannot be afraid of water or um, show you know, any hesitation whatsoever because we live on a lake and that's part of our life and that's a deal breaker. And I also you know, explained to them that she would be trained to pass canine good citizen. She would be trained to pass a public access service test and at the end of that time she would be vested 
as a service dog. The ADA does not require any kind of certification, doesn't require paperwork on the dog. You're not even required to vest your dog. But for the protection of the dog uh, while she's working, I believe that it's a good idea to let the public know that this is, you know, not a nice doggy that we can pet. This dog is a service dog and you should always speak to the owner, not the dog. And if you, you know, really, if you have a little kid who's all excited, it's okay. It's totally okay to ask the owner. And it's up to the owner to decide, is this a good time for the dog to take a break and make a friend or not? Uh, I should probably go into that in detail in some other video. At any rate, the upshot of this story is that the dog I have is probably not going to pass her public service exam. She came to me, like I said, as a pack dog, as a, you know, she has a wild tendency. She's highly reactive and must be constrained, uh, except for this, you know, this occasion I felt comfortable. We were far enough away from traffic and people. I felt comfortable and it was safer for her and I both for her to be untethered. Um, but I cannot at all, when I take her out, le let her be untethered for more than a couple of minutes of training at this time because her recall isn't that good and she's very easily distracted. So all in all, I feel that the breeders having had the explanation of what this dog's purpose was going to be kind of hoodwinked me because it wasn't the first time that they had tried to place this dog with someone else. How many times that happened before I got her, I have no way of knowing. I do know that they misrepresented the truth about this dog. Um, and so, you know, it is what it is. I have a dog who is an athlete, which is what I needed. And if she doesn't pass her public access test because she's too distractible, then we'll see if we can't get her classified as a home only service dog. At any rate, at four and a half years old, she came to me, she knew nothing uh, other than off and a specialized command that I have let go extinct. She does not respond to it anymore. I've had to teach her how to heal, how to sit, what down means, um, come, uh, and a bunch of other commands like she's learning to bring her leash and bring her bowl when she wants food or she's thirsty. Um, she's a great dog, don't get me wrong. She's a natural noser and she can pull uh, in her little, we rigged up a little training cart so she can learn to cart, which is something I need her to do. Um, she's a, like I said, she's a great dog. She's just not the dog that I needed when I went looking for a service dog candidate and it broke my heart because I had been waiting for about 15 years for a service dog. And because of the type of service dog I need, um, it had to be owner trained uh, up to a certain point. And this is not a seeing eye dog and it's not a hearing dog. Obviously, if I'm tromping around um, on rocks and over urban rubble, and out on hikes with her, then clearly she's not a primarily a physical disability dog. Of psoriatic arthritis, which apparently I've had uh, for a couple decades and it went undiagnosed. Nevertheless, since we decided to take this impromptu trip down the river, I thought it would be a good time for me to introduce you to her. So before I grow roots on this nice rock, let's get moving because the arthritis will stop me. 
So we moved along down the river until we got to this post. And this, it's actually a broken off tree. But we're, this view is actually looking back up the river towards the dam. And so beyond this, only maybe a couple of yards, it's a dead stop. There's the under brush is too hard to get through and if you wanted to you know go along the river you'd probably be in a drop off pretty quick because there are there's broken trees and logs and debris extending out into the river a good piece so we stopped and that was probably the safest plan for both of us because i did not have hiking boots on and um, it was a little warm and i was a little sweaty we were both getting hungry. It was, you know, towards noon or a little after. So we're going to make our way back. And I, at some point, I will be able to show you uh, some clear spots where it was easy to walk and other spots where it was kind of tough. And the dog is out of sight, and I can't even hear her now. So really, without too much trouble, I found her called her back she nosed around a little bit and then we started heading back towards town hey leave the grass alone Well, as you can see, we're about three quarters of the way back from our little journey. I showed you a little bit of what the terrain was like, the smooth terrain. As you might uh, recall, I don't have a gimbal, so it took more concentration to keep the camera relatively steady and remember to pan slowly than uh, I had ability Good to shot. watch Good my girl. feet. So, and you can also see that she was much more subdued. She wasn't running all over the place. And she kept coming back to check on me. If she got too far ahead, she would come back without calling and just, you know, kind of tag me to see, okay, are you still moving there, two-legged person, you poor thing with only two legs? And, yeah, I was still moving. But now, the most challenging part, we have to get back across the debris field. And if there was a theme song for this little adventure, it would be a mixture of Poison Ivy and You Were Always On My Mind by Willie Nelson. Because as we were sitting out at the other end of this walk, and I was chit-chatting with you about my girl and her advantages and disadvantages I was itching and I looked in my on my forearm at my left arm and sure enough there was a blister raising and I looked on my wrist and there was a scratch and something itched and that spot on my wrist is almost the exact same spot where the first blister for poison ivy uh, raised decades ago when I the first time I had it fortunately I think it was just a bug bite
Come, come, come. Sky, come. Good girl. Good job. Come on, check, check, check. Check. Check, check, check. So this red dot is sort of a marker of where I think we um, travel to. And you can see uh, it's pretty far. I checked my pedometer and our walk time and so it looks like we walked about a half mile in and a half mile back. And that would make our overall walk time about two miles, which is pretty good for us. I used to be able to clip off four or five miles uh, but when I moved a year ago, um, things changed and a lot of the walking time has to do with training her and we haven't gotten in our long walks. But now that the weather's changing and it's a little cooler in the morning, we're going to see if we can extend our range a little bit and um, walk a little farther. So in processing this video and uploading it last night, the rendering failed and the upload failed. And so I learned that this machine is not capable of producing much more than where we're at right now. So we're going to end it and see if we can't get it uploaded again. Thank you so much for spending time with us. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And until we see you again, thanks very much. Have a great day. See you soon.